hola and got carried away a bit. Yeah, what? Huh? Got carried away? Yeah, I got carried away with uh, a thing that I was doing here. Oh, I see. Now, oh, come on. Seriously? Oh, here we go. Are you good? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. You had a good time. I'm just, trying, um, I'm just trying to set up an extraction here. That sounds there okay. Go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I would show it to you, but I would rather not <laughs> this be reported. Oh, crap. Yep, let's test it. That's page. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to set this to run. And we'll see if this can affect anything um, uh, on the page. I'm, I'm running, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the cheapest guy on the planet. I'm running with all, um, what's it called? Trial, trial versions of software. Yeah. So I am uh, at, uh, at three days. Save as new and build task. All right, all right, now I can talk to you. So in the background, uh, in the background, it's scanning uh, about 2,200 listings. Yeah. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just ever refining the recipe for what to pull down because I'm, I'm finding I was, I, was, I, I had to massage the uh, output way too much. Yeah. So I'm trying to uh, get a more a cleaner extract so that I don't have to fiddle with it as much. Uh, so yesterday didn't do anything because as soon as like you and I talked, yeah. packed the car, went to the zoo. Oh, it was a, it was a good day. Very yeah. good day. Very good day. Is that your son? Has he been there before? Oh yeah, we've we, we seem to be going every year. So it's, okay. it's, uh, there's there are a lot of um, happy memories, and those usually those memories are associated with getting those giant lollipops. Like that. oh yeah, yeah yeah. <laughs> I would I would rather they would ban them. But interesting story. You could buy beer anywhere in the zoo. Really? And I don't mean like a sit down place and close like a, yeah, this yeah. is a little this is a little, little carts thing. yeah. Since when? Oh, I, I haven't been to the zoo. Oh, um, yeah, that's... probably five years or so. But, yeah, but yeah. Uh, is it is it because it's private property? Is it because it's fenced in? Because I, I I can sure get on board with traveling to the zoo with another family, no problem, as long as someone yeah. else is driving. Yeah. Well, yeah, they they probably got a liquor license to it's closed in property, whatever. Yeah. Because I can, I can little. sure see like hecklers at the, at the Lion King. Like, hey, you can't yeah. be sitting there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sir, cool. uh, there are kids here. Fuck you, yeah. When we were at Disney World at Animal Kingdom, they have like the gorilla, the, the, what are they called? Silverback gorillas or whatever. Yes. And there, there's like a moat, like a big cat separating them yeah but people there's always one idiot who's like taunting the gorilla and stuff and of course the gorilla just shits in his hand and throws it at the people <laughs> no seriously yeah Dang. so you gotta wow that's a story to tell you kids yeah i mean there's there's all kinds of videos like that i've seen online but yeah you don't want to taunt uh, the gorillas yeah we've seen a silverback yesterday at the zoo it's uh yeah um I think the zoo's pretty done a pretty good job of um, making it not feel like everything's caged in, with the exception of the monkeys and the orangutans and all those primates. Like, I find when I go through that part of the zoo, it's a little more depressing than uh, it is, yeah. than the rest of it. I agree. Yeah, the yeah the open fields, like yeah, the, they they've done they've done a, they've done a good job. I've been I've been to the uh, I've been to the Moscow Zoo. Yeah, it's it's it's. I mean, when you're a child, you don't understand it because for you, it's all fascinating. You're seeing animals you've only seen in books. Yeah, 
but as a grown up, you can't help but think that this is this is the same thing as uh, like a concentration camp because yeah. it's all it's all concrete cages. Yeah. So it's the old style zoo. It's like. Yeah. It's yeah. So the Toronto Zoo, like yeah, it's. I, I'm glad they survived. I'm glad that somebody was funding them because uh, I'm sure as hell it wasn't easy for them. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I mean the school system is like their lifeblood and I, i'm sure when you know schools close down and they why why the school system well just i i know every school kid in the gta goes to the zoo at least once a year uh, up to a certain grade at least that was my experience so i just think like that's a huge part mm-hmm. of their what they do education and and stuff anyway i don't know but it's interesting it's, it is cool to see animals and you know, that you otherwise would never see. But yeah, um, what did I do? I had uh, Jamie did a a live um, master class on Zoom yesterday from one till two thirty. It's basically his intake for the next session of Thriving Coaches Blueprint. Mm-hmm. It was interesting to, to uh, I don't know to learn from what he does. Right. So I got an email and I don't know if it was the night before that, that morning inviting me to jo- to attend it. So he, he invites alumni from his courses to attend basically this. He, and he, 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 he uh, says, you know, I'm going to be showing content that I've never shown before. So that's the, the, the carrot for you to go on the call, mm-hmm. but it, it creates a much bigger depth of participation in the call itself for people who are thinking of signing up when you see all these people and the enthusiasm and um, the interaction, because he gets you to type in a bunch of stuff in the comments and and whatever, but it's, it's, it's it's kind of a cool phenomenon that he has. Cause I I would say from my session of the course, there was at least four or five people alumni on there. And then there's other names I recognized from other clarity things that I've been on. Um, now you couldn't really tell how many total participants there were, but mm-hmm. I'd say there's at least 20 or 25 people regularly commenting in the comments. So anyway, it's kind of interesting how, uh, was it good? Yeah, it was good. I mean, this guy is like a bundle of energy. It's like incredible how this guy goes for over an hour. Um, and just like energy through the roof so anyway it's uh it's good we got a, he actually has a, a weekend boot camp this weekend which i'm attending again because this kit this is the, the same boot camp that kicked off the course and i started it so i got uh when, like when you buy his program you get invited to a number of free events mm-hmm. and this is i think this might be my last free event anyway it's uh so i'll be up on the weekend again at like 4 30 in the morning <laughs> But it's, yeah. it's it's cool. So, so are you finding yourself in this uh, like what, what you were calling a learning loop, or is there is there a uh, like um in in when 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 you think about this, yeah, what's uh, what's the reason for the madness? Sorry, I'm, I'm wording it incorrectly. In other words, once you're done, yeah, what are you gonna do? Yeah. What do you plan? Or like, how do you, how do you, or is this, is this just a master class? It's just you being, becoming better and better and better. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, there's a couple levels to it. Like one is um, like a, basically there's three transformations. He calls them that you go through yep. to become a, a thriving coach. First one is grounding. So it's, it's your embodied understanding of, uh, the, the coaching principles. Mm-hmm. And so like, you know, when I first started this in March or whatever it was, I didn't know anything about these the principles or this style of coaching or anything. And now I know a lot more. So when you, when you go through similar material, at a di- but you're at a different place and you're grounding, mm-hmm. you, you pick up different things. So it's, I mean, that education, I don't think ever ends necessarily, but uh, you know, if you're just talking about what we were talking about previously about people <laughs> who are just caught in the endless loop of learning and not doing, mm-hmm. 
um, you know, that's not really it. The, the thing with this weekend thing that I'm going to, like a lot of the weekend is um, he has a lot of breakout groups and you're doing like experiment, he calls them experiments or exercises <laughs> with, with other people in the community. Okay. So it's, it's kind of, it's like practicing, if you want to call it that, pra- practicing your coaching, practicing having conversations with people, um, calibrating with them, listening, uh, pointing them in the right direction, that kind of stuff. So that's what's kind of, like you come out of that weekend, it's almost, uh, you know, not to sound overly corny, but it's almost like a spiritual experience these weekends. Like you, you come away from them enlightened. Um, so really, okay, that's good. Um, and then, I mean, the, there is the, like he, one of the things he talked about yesterday was, uh, which was part of the new content was how to get your coaching practice flying in the next 30 days. But it was basically a three-step thing, like get clarity on, on where you are, get clarity on where you want to go. And then take the next step. Like, what is the what is the very next thing that you need to do? Now go do it. So, um, anyway, like this morning, I've already sent out all the Zoom meeting invites to my leadership for retail managers course. So those Zoom meetings start a week tomorrow on the eleventh. Um, I send out all the credentials on Sunday for the, the course, only one person's logged in so far. And I, I got one bounce back uh, on my G on my zoom invite saying that some email address is blocked to, to send. So right. I don't know what the hell that's about, but um, it's so funny how email is so, I don't know, unreliable, more, much more unreliable than I ever imagined. Mm-hmm. Um, which is a little bit frustrating because you think about it like mail, like if you mailed something to somebody, but the reason the mail system works is because you're virtually guaranteed that you're, if you mail something, it's going to get to the address that you mail it to. Yeah. It seems, and I used to think email was like that too. Like if you send somebody like people, you know, people phone you go, Oh, I just sent you an email. And you're like, yeah, thanks. I know that's how email works. Like, <laughs> but in fact, it doesn't, it doesn't actually work like that. Like you send people emails that you may not get it. Yeah, that's true. Which is very strange anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, one of the things, so in the, the call yesterday, like he, he goes, what, what is the next thing you need to do to have a, a, an impact or move your business forward? So people were typing things. So I, I typed in, uh, reach out to 10 contacts, DM 10, 10 people this week. So that's, that's one of my plans this week is to reach out to 10 people. And it's funny because I'd, I'd reached out to some people. Uh, pre, uh, this this one lady I used to work with at Sobeys who I hired. Yep. Um, I think it was she had a work anniversary or something. Like, I'm trying to think, it might have been eight years or nine years since I hired her, and she just celebrated her anniversary. This was a, a few months ago, so I'd I'd sent her a message on LinkedIn congratulating her on her anniversary and just kind of reminiscing about when I hired her. Um. So it was a fun, it was a funny story. I hired her as a business analyst mm-hmm. and my boss was insistent. He goes, if you hire somebody who, who doesn't actually have good Excel skills, I'll kill you. <laughs> Something to that effect. So I actually had, came down to two candidates and then I made them come in and do an Excel exercise in front of me on like looking things up and formulas and just like some basic stuff. But yeah. anyway, when this lady came in, I, because you know how you there's there's ten ways to skin a cat, right? In Excel, yep. like you can do a lot of things a lot of different ways. Anyway, the the reason I hired her is when she came in, she did all everything I wanted her to do, but she did it differently than I would have done it, which just kind of impressed me that there's a, you know new new ways, and she just demonstrated her skills anyway. Um, so I was reminiscing about remembering putting her through the grinder on that uh, on that test. Anyway, she she didn't respond to me for a long time, and then she responded to me after like a I don't know a month or so. And then yesterday, I got another message from her because I had responded to her message, and uh, and I was thinking of what Jamie said. And it was like, you know, the, the notion that he, he used the metaphor of um, surfing, and that the way surfing works is you just sit there and wait for the waves to come along, and then you have to pick a wave and try to ride it. 
And he says, often what happens to people who are trying to start their business, whether it's a coaching practice or whatever, is they sit there and they just let wave after wave go by. And they either don't recognize that it's a wave or it's not the right wave or it's not the right time or whatever. And he basically said, just like, get on the fucking wave. <laughs> um, anyway, so I, I responded to her message yesterday. I said, um, I'd love to catch up with you. Um, and I sent, I sent her a link for my calendar thing um, to book a meeting. So I'm waiting for her to book something. But it's one of those things like without having watched Jamie yesterday, I probably would have just said, yeah, nice hearing from you. And that would have been the end of it. Yep. Um, and I don't know if anything will come out of out of it, but it's like, you know, it just reminded me of like, oh, the universe is sending me a wave here of this person who's reached out to me. Yeah. Um, I should have a conversation with them. Let's see what, what happens. So um, anyway, it's kind of uh, that. that's one of the things I like about reconnecting with the course and the material is because you just get all those reminders of whether it's motivation or just reminders of what you should be doing. Right. Yeah. That's interesting. I was, <clears throat> that's that actually, there's nothing to say. It's a solid advice. It's, it's, it's the advice that everyone should heed. Um, I was, uh, what was I doing yesterday? Oh, um, so I was trying uh, in, in my, perpetual, call it OCD, call it. Uh, so I, I, I never, unlike you, sir, I never go out and buy something on a whim, except that course that I bought. Yeah. Yeah. So if I go buy something on a whim, I, I, I put a lot of money down. But I research a lot. So I was, I was, I was challenged, like I, I decided to try to find if anyone on this planet has used the pieces of software that we talked the last two days about yeah. and got any good results. So yeah. outside of the companies themselves telling you that, oh yeah, this is freaking solid. Of yeah. course they were. And, uh, and I found a gentleman who doesn't have a huge YouTube following, but what he does from, from the three videos that I watched from him, uh, from my gather, he just does websites websites galore so sets up a website picks a niche and decides to monetize it and so he was doing so he was doing an experiment on in one of the videos where he said he picked two niches different niches oh so yeah. that 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 that's the only thing i found interesting sorry inconsistent about his experience so two different niches and one he was monetizing by just pumping out um incredible amount of content uh, seo optimized but incredible like, like crazy volumes like five like he was saying something like five articles a day for a period of like 60 days so that's what 300 articles yeah. in other words trying to uh, make google see him as an authority on the subject right and then what the website would do is it would lead into affiliate sales through Amazon. Then the second one was a different one. The second one was uh, promoting to um, setting up a website as, oh, sorry. First one was content and the second one was affiliate and it was just selling a con something through an affiliate. Right. And then he started talking about something else. So he does multiples of these. And it's not to say it's good, bad. I don't actually know how he does. Like this is not a this was not a sales pitch. This was not something like oh I made millions of dollars. Yeah. But his point was like with this with this test, he was trying to see which one of those websites will will get to a thousand dollars in revenue. Uh, sorry, in in profit first, right. not in revenue. Revenue like this is easy. Um. Mm -hmm. So he is casting a tremendous numbers of lines. And uh, then he sees which one bites. And some take off and some do not. Yeah. Um, I was thinking to myself that um, I, I, don't have, uh, I, I don't have the experience or the mindset for this. My mindset is very let's call it classical business it's like you build something 
it's a product or a service that people will want to buy. So you go through the process of building, through the process of setting up a company, through marketing, and then sales. And then you kind of go through that cycle again and again. Yeah. Meanwhile, it seems that um, just as just as this is a legit approach, there's also an approach where you just because it's so easy, you just pump stuff out there and you see if something uh, ticks or catches or takes up. And if it doesn't, cut it loose. Yeah. Which um, was he buying like domains for all these sites and stuff? Uh huh. So uh, I'm guessing. I'm guessing that's. I mean, it's not a big expense, but it's, you know, there's. Uh, yeah, it's not a big expense. I wonder if, um, well, this is, a, this is the thing I've never researched. Like, uh, it, it's actually, it's actually a very good question. It would be interesting. I would just plug into Google is saying as to, like, do you need to buy domains or maybe you can create a subdomain on a website, but what does that mean for SEO? Yeah. So I, I, I haven't investigated that subject. But I would imagine that 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 uh, he is doing that, and if anything that doesn't it doesn't generate any profit in a year, then you just cancel it. Yeah. So you're you're probably going to be out the most fifty dollars a year. Yeah. And there are hosting plans that allow you multiple like unlimited websites. Right. And so on, on that subject, I was uh, because I was thinking about what I was telling you. Like, um, I, I wanted I want to create content for Natalie's business. I want to create content for for businesses. Yeah. Oh, I'm, oh, I, I was frozen there for a second. Uh, but then I thought to myself, um, I also wanted to create. Uh, remember, I told you I had that presentation about how, like, an analyst and a business person should talk, or yeah. how they don't talk. I have that content ready, so. So you it's just pump that into Jarvis, it. and um, get, you're gonna pump that into Jarvis and get more yeah. content from it. Well, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, that's that's the thing. That's is that what that guy's using to create 300 articles a week? Uh, no, he was uh, he, him. I found through using the Surfer SEO. Okay. Yeah. So, because he was doing a test, uh, what's he using to generate all that? What's he using to generate all that content? I don't know. PLR, maybe. Yeah. That whole the whole thing I was thinking the other night of just how like, um, <laughs> is there anything actually like really created by a human being out there? Like it's you know like, is there this vicious circle of like? Oh, there's PLR or there's content that you're like on the, that uh, that video that we watched where you know okay go scrape the web for this content then spit that put that into Jarvis and create more content. Well, yeah. presumably somebody's scraping that content to create more content. Like it's like how much of this like at some point is just Jarvis creating content off of what Jarvis already created. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's the same thing that they they were saying about the news since. Um... Since advertising was not uh, fueling newspapers anymore, yeah. then the original journalist uh, journalistic investigations were on the decline, and most of the stuff that news media were pumping out were uh, repurposed bits and pieces they found somewhere else. Yeah. But that leads to exactly what you're saying: is that eventually, eventually, if no one generates original content, yeah. it's all regurgitation of what you know. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's um, it's a very very interesting thing. No, of course, of course, I'm sure that this this people are going to be able to uh, be make money on if if everyone starts doing this, then it's going to remain within this realm of like content. Yeah. Up until the time that it gets stale and somebody tries something new and then it creates a new because it's so new and it's not like everything that's been pumping out. Yeah.
Yeah, so that's um, that's it. Cool. So you, you once you do this, uh, figure out your listing thing. Like, are you going to be live before you go away on that site, or are you going to be? That's my my plan is my plan is to work on this today. My plan is to get like to have listings uh, show on my website. Yeah, and I'm going to be just providing uh, the backlinks to uh, to to the websites where they reside because I don't have any means of contacting the posters. Yeah. So it just makes sense. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, that's 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 the idea. So I want I want to try I want to try to set this up in the next two days. So today is Tuesday, Wednesday, and uh, see if it works. Not if it works. I mean, how well it works. Yeah. And what's the plan for Natalie's business? Like that. That one I'm actually I'm actually very keen about because I have I I told you I I, I told you about the PLR package that I bought for her yeah oh, like five hundred odd not very good but nevertheless articles so yeah. they would be they would be a perfect starting point for generating content yeah and I'm gonna pick uh, I'm gonna pick a topic that she was interested in and um, capture that. Uh, so the way uh, Surfer SEO works, you've seen the video. So first you generate um, uh, content, uh, not calendar, content ideas, Bas basically those clusters. Yeah. Identify those clusters and um, pick the ones that um, pick the ones that I'm like about a hundred probably, or well, at least 50. I mean, I, let's not get ahead of myself. Uh, an article takes, uh, when, when you're good based on the videos, it's anywhere between an hour and two hours to write. Yeah. With Jarvis, that's, we're talking about like a 2000 plus word article. So it's, it's still, it's still a good chunk of time. So a hundred hours, that's a long time. That's a week yeah. really. And that's, that's a week not sleeping essentially. So two weeks. But uh, have that done, and uh, then um, then see uh, because I already have I think analytics on it. Uh, I yeah I have Facebook Pixel on it. So publishing that and seeing if there is an uptick in visit in visits because she has a very clear CTA yeah. on her site which uh, invites people to contact her for a consultation. And. Um, that's 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 as pure of an experiment as you can you can have yeah and we'll see we'll see if that works because what what should happen is she would get a call it's even if she gets let's say 10 let's let's be bold 10 new clients yeah after let's say three months of uh, publishing the last last article that can uh, generate an additional two clients. Thank you. How two does she uh, how, how does she um, sell her clients? Like, does she sell them like per session, or does she do packages? Or I'm just curious because oh. of the, it's very aligned to like what Jamie's teaching in, in terms of how she's, to she's doing she's she's doing both but ideally what she'd like to do is when you get enough uh clients uh or at least some leads is to invite them to a joint session uh, sorry joint session <laughs> like webinars or something yeah because then you can charge a lower price but you be available to broader audience yeah that's the thing So yeah, first, usually, usually people, um, because this has to do with your own health yeah. and uh, people are either shy about it and then they prefer much, much rather prefer a webinar session where they don't have to say or ask anything and they just absorb information and see if anything works for them. Yeah. Or it's, uh, it's a different one. It's people would rather have a one-on-one -on -one where they solve their problem. Yeah. That's it. Cool. So right now, traffic to her website, I think, is 
pretty much nothing. Yeah. I'll, I'll check it after this uh, scrape finishes. Yeah, I got I got my Google Analytics email this morning. Something like you had sixty five visitors to your website. <laughs> eighty nine. Mm-hmm. Eighty nine users. One hundred sixty one sessions. Sixty three percent bounce rate. Average duration two minutes fifty five seconds. That's pretty good, I think. Yeah, that's very good. That is very, very good, yeah. So, but that was down 95% in users because I, I had uh, this last month, I didn't spend any money on any advertising. So this is all organic, essentially. Yeah, I get, well, organic or through, well, it says the, the acquisitions, 36% rever- referral, 26% direct, 37% all other sessions. So I assume referral would be like from my posts and things. Yeah, that's from, from other uh, websites. Sometimes they get, they, they're labeled as referral. Sometimes they're la- labeled as social media, right. social. So. All right. Good stuff, man. All right. Well, that's back to it. So what are you working on today? Um, I got to, I want to want get my free resume thing launched today mm-hmm. um, and posted. And I'm also, the other, the other idea I had, which I've been toying with. So I, I did that seven weeks of my uh, leadership for new managers course. And then I kind of went on a two week hiatus. Um, but I want to, I want to launch something that's kind of like Jamie style of reaching out to people that were on that and, and other people in my network saying, I'm looking for like, and I haven't decided on the number like six to 10 or 10 to 15, something like that people to sign up for a pilot program on, I'm going to call it something like leadership coaching and mentoring. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to have some kind of flavor of, you know, it's back to school time. It's, you know, if you if you if your company has uh, yeah, training and development uh, um, stipends for you to spend back to school, you know it's a good time to, to get yourself back to learning mode and uh, sign up for this course. Uh, it's going to be, I think I'm going to do it like for the month of September, so four weeks in September, weekly calls, and uh, basically build it as I as it happens based on, I want to have conversations with people, find out what their issues are and build content around that. So I want to get that kind of figured out today because it's, I want to be able to spend August trying to recruit people into that and then, uh, and then run that in the month of September. Right. All right. All right. We'll see you uh, tomorrow. Bye. All right. Take care.